brother, and Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's The Estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before... <laughs>
Peter Gordon Clement. You were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering to Fanny and Martin Clement. Christ, was it that long ago? We didn't have much back then, but where there's lad, there's lube, as they say at the butchers. That's right. They got up at the crack of dawn to make the journey down to the capital by coach. It's your infamous old man and her long-suffering husband, ladies and gentlemen, Fanny and Martin Clement. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to have you both here. So, tell me, what was life here. like for young Peter in the what Clement was house? Like for young it was the same as every other house. Now, special about it. Even back then, you could tell our Peter were bound for an audience. He used to make up little plays and make us all gather round and watch them. Do you remember, Martin? Aye, bloody long they were. But if you got a pretty chuff, you should wave it in the fellas' faces, as they say down the pits. And our P.T. were always waving his chuff about. <laughs> After all, if you weren't going to have it stuffed, you, you shouldn't have had it true. <laughs> Clement there with the first bits of your life. <laughs> it's nineteen thirty eight, and you're a fifteen year old at Rothering Elementary, but already you've got quite the reputation oh, as a ladies' man. Oh, Jesus, you haven't got Jan's sandwich here, have you? Oh, Jesus, you Even better. Who's here, this? Yeah. I remember you slipping me tongue and gibble round back of your nan's house. Oh, you reckoned it were your first kiss, but me, I could tell it would. Mind you, it turns out you said that to all girls, but we loved you anyways, because you were a charming man. Well... Christ, it could be any one of them. Is it Patty Cakes? It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bones! Cracking, that's my type of girl. You know what? All right. OK. Um, let me. Let me. Yes. I'll take that one. Chelsea. Oh, God. Hello, pets. Hey. <laughs> Oh, look at you. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take a seat? Yeah, is that all right? Yeah. And we're in. So, Chelsea, let me ask you this. So, Chelsea, what do you think we could see in this. young Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring household Prime Minister? Oh, well, that's easy, Pet, you see. Our Peter here, he always, always had a, a surprise up his sleeve. So, do you know what he did after our first date? No, of course you don't, so I'll tell you. That first date, he smuggled me back into school where we used to go to. I hadn't been back there since I'd left, but somehow, I don't know why I found it a surprise, but... He'd gotten hold of Master Key and he'd made this lovely little nook under school stage and there were cushions and a, a sleeping bag and all these candles and... Hey, no, weren't what you lot are thinking with your gutter mind, no. Cos he were a perfect gent. He kissed me. By it, did he kiss me. But he never pushed his look. No. Nope. Do you know what he did? No. Nope. I'll tell you. Do you know what he did? Kid you not, he read to me from a book that he nicked out school library. Of course. <laughs> Chelsea. He kissed me. He read to me. And then he walked me home. Because he was a class act then. And he's a class act now. Oh, bless you. Do you remember what the book was? Aye. I do. And I also remember that thing, what you do with your hands. Steady, <laughs> now, you'll get me into trouble with Mrs C. Chelsea Bonds, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, 
chicken. <laughs> I will see you in green room. Not if I see you first. I don't even know what a bloody green room is. Now, before we bring our next guest on, let's have a look at some classic Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to watch. And that's about two minutes. Oh, take a look at that monitor. I can't see a thing without my glasses. One time, it was the height of our second run. By this time, we knew each other way too well. Anyway, we got towards the end of the show. I think OK. I remember this one, LJ Salt for a week. Good choice, Eric. <laughs> Not my choice, if I'm honest. Can we reset, please? Ah, oh, we've seen this one before. It's Frank's birthday. You can skip it if you like. Just press the advert button again. We will just be two men aging disgracefully in a large shed. See you next week. Before we go, sorry, PC. Thought somebody would have told you. There is someone else we need to thank today. OK. And who might that be, LJ? Someone who's been with us right from the very start, PC. Through thick and thin. Me, ma'am. <laughs> Actually, it's his birthday. Would it be somebody whose birthday it is today? Yeah, and it's his birthday today. Frank, come on over here. We've got you something. Come on up here, Frank. Come on. This is Frank, our long-suffering floor manager. And I'm not ashamed to say that I love this man. We all do. So we've had a bit of a whip round. No, we haven't. And we've all clubbed together. And we have got you this. Well, I've bought it, actually. Oh, lummy, what a beauty. Look at the detail on that icing. Look at these miniature marzipan figurines. It's, it's so intricate. Well, it's from that place in Frampton Square. They're famous for it. And I know you collect miniatures, so uh, it seemed right somehow. Gosh. Thanks. It's going great, I think. That's Everything's really smooth, according to plan. Yeah, well, he's been in the game for years. Mm. I used to work so with him on Peter, you know. Lovely guy. I was a runner for Dorothy Hammerman. She scared the shit out of me. I loved him, though. He was backstage. Yep, saw her in the corridor. Hopefully she didn't see me. You hiding from one of the guests, Eric? Ten seconds, everybody. That still makes me laugh to this day. Yeah, all right. She scares me a bit. It wasn't that funny in the end. Going in five, four, three. And I'm pretty badly allergic, so... Fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across so many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. Tomia! Ah, That's right, a man who needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway. Your sidekick for almost 13 years, little Jimmy Chisholm! <laughs> Fuck me, they put him back in his old outfit. What a prick. I got our gym now, mostly. Lovely. <laughs> Ah, oh, together again, eh, lads? This has got to be bringing back some memories, eh? Well, it certainly does. Not all of them good ones, eh, Pete? Ah, oh, we had our moments, LJ. I'll give you that. <laughs> well, Jimmy, you're certainly in a position to give us a unique insight onto this bit of Peter's life. What are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and the off-screen versions of Peter Clement? Well, you know, Eamon, there's really not that big a difference. I mean, Pete's not pretending to be anything. He is what he is, and what he is is a massive... Steady now. Prankster. He said prankster, not wanker, in case you didn't get it. Oh, I've lost count of the number of pranks he's pulled on me over the years, both on and off screen. <laughs> Actually, we've got a little bit of footage here which shows us exactly what you're talking about. Let's roll it there. And let's get those nails in good and tight, shall we, little Jimmy? Sure thing, Pete. Tool me up. Here you go, pal. Make sure you hit it good and hard. Make sure you hit it good and hard. Oh, Jimmy, what have you done to yourself now? 
<laughs> God, I remember that when we sabotaged the hammer. It took us three hours to set that one up. Yeah, and about six weeks before I could walk without crutches. Oh, God, those crutches, they were always getting in the way. Were they? Uh, last none of the old spark, eh, boys? <laughs> well, that's the last footage you find of me wearing sandals. I mean, my feet are grotesque now. Children get upset. <laughs> <laughs> Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody. It's Jim now. Never mind. Peace up. In 1941, long before Just the Job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Ten words about Peter. I only need two. My conscience. Can't place the voice. Let's try the face. On you come. No, still not. Do you hear songs, Good for you. God, your name's on the ballot, too. <laughs> You'll be famous soon enough. Or infamous. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So, what's it like to be friends with Peter Clement? So well, even though it feels like I've known him forever because of all the TV shows, I've only really known Peter as more than an acquaintance for a very short period of time. We're still on our best behaviour. <laughs> Precisely. Friendship takes time. Shared experience. <laughs> That's all to come for Peter and I. Uh, Julia Smallberry, everybody. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, yeah, we're way off track. We're just off the tracks. It's this person. Quite soon, then. <laughs> Very likely. Yeah, would you please just go? Oh, me. <laughs> but of course, it wasn't that only. That was brave, it wasn't Eamon. Only... It wasn't only just the job that the nation invited. Sorry, only what was brave? Just the job Being that nation... rude Sorry, was... to the next Prime Being Minister. <laughs> I don't think I was. Sorry, who? Julia Salisbury, the woman you just told Julia to fuck Salisbury, off, the woman you just told is going to be the next Prime Minister. Is going to be the next Prime Minister. Cheese. Yep. Cheese. Yep. Oh, shite. Uh, let's have a look at a little bit of Petey there, shall we? Let's have a look at a little bit of Petey there, shall we? How's the run, Norm Petey? And a couple of minutes back. Well, I check and see if my passport's still in date. Same monitor as before, Eric. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, Eric, we're four guests in, we're horribly off track, and I might be arrested for treason or something. What's your plan? At this point, the smart thing for me to do is to deny I ever met you. Until it wasn't. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure regular viewers will have noticed there's been something a little different about tonight's show. Normally on this show, we have celebrities, politicians, people you've heard of, but you know. Do you think, OK? Do you think I did the right thing, Eric? They were people. Shutting it all down for a career in politics. Every one of, you of course you did, mate. Written by your own if you win. Time. Reset, everybody. I've done a few things over the years where I can to help folks out. I've opened my checkbook from time to time, certainly, and I've tried to open my heart. But the thing is, ladies and gents, it's not enough. And it never will be. Not sat here doing this. You might remember a few months ago when I had an impressive barrister here called Julia Salisbury. We talked about standing up to society's bullies. She inspired me, actually, and we stayed in touch. And we talked a lot. And we've concluded that there is only one way to help the sheer number of people we both aspire to. So, the program you've just watched was the last ever episode of Peter. I'm sorry, that must be a shock. We known it here for a few weeks now, but we didn't want to fuss or a star-studded final special episode. Just ordinary people. The people who need to advance. You'll be hearing that word a lot over the coming year. And you'll be seeing me out and about, and I hope you'll all come and say hello and tell me what I can do for you. Because over the last almost seven years, 
You vote on. So very much. Come in. Dotty, get out here, big brother. Start welling up. <laughs> this is Dorothy Hammerman, a woman who, despite never appearing on this show until now, has somehow managed to become a household name. <laughs> Seriously, I'd never do anything as desperate as booking myself onto your show. It's not my show, it's yours. Well, it's got your name on it. It's ours. Okay, it's ours. <laughs> Dorothy's off to take all the lessons that she's learnt here to shake up one of our rivals who I am not going to give a free advert to. Well, I will. It's three. Uh, it's interesting. I, I thought we were somewhere really interesting there, but I felt we wandered off halfway through that last segment, didn't you think? You mean when you started rushing through everything? Yes, it did bring the quality of the show down. Are you saying this is my fault? I, I'm sorry. Am I the one who brings the guests on in the wrong order? No, I'm not Wait, saying that. Wait, let me that. have a go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I get that wrong? No, I just mean you don't have to be such a... You have to make a big deal about everything. Over the last few years... Such a what? Nothing. No, 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 Eric. Such a what? Such a prick, Eamon. You don't have to be such a prick about things. And I've worked to the point of collapse on far, far too many occasions. I've tried to be honest about everything right. as I see it. Thank you, Eric. Maybe you've learned something. Please, Eamon. No, 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 no. I appreciate your honesty. I, I, I didn't mean it, Eamon. Why don't you just go over there and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to think about your feedback. Please, Eamon, go. You go over there. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Ten seconds. Going in five, four, three. Eamon, we're live. Eamon, we're live. Eamon. 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 Right, yeah, there we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Welcome back, everybody. Um, unforgettable stuff. But while you took all the credit, while you took all the credit, while you, while you, while you, while you, while you, why is <laughs> it? Come on, Eamon. You're a leaf in the wind. You're a leaf in the wind. You're a leaf in the wind. Um, everything all right out there? Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Yeah, you, you just stay where you are. Fine, fine. Yeah, you, you just stay where you are. Piss off. If you like, I honestly, I don't really care. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I am a mild man, really. I, I am, you know, I, I have many, many children, and I hardly ever smack them, even though sometimes they really fucking ask for it. Get back to the script. Uh, you know, you see, that voice that you can hear, uh, that's Eric, and his job is to make sure that the show runs smoothly, and as you've witnessed, he's not doing a very good job. Because, you see, when Eric makes a mistake, you know, it's not him who looks like a prick, is it, ladies and gentlemen? No! No, no, no. No, no, no. No, it's me. No, it's me. I'm the prick. I'm the prick. I mean, I trained at a serious drama school, you know? A serious drama school. There's more to me than this, 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 this horrible crucif jacket. We're not doing the rest of the show, then. We're not doing the rest of the show, then. Nope. Sorry, Peter. Nope. Sorry, Eric. Sorry, Peter. Sorry, Eric. Can't do this anymore. No, I, 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 I don't even want to be here. I, I, you know, I, 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 I didn't train I, I, for. I didn't train for. For this. For this. You know, I, I want to sing the big you know, I, swing I numbers. Sing the big 
Come sail with me, come on, let's sail away. Let's say goodbye to the nine to five down in Palmerino Bay dance break. Yeah, obviously it's better with the top shoes, you know. You, yeah, obviously it's, it's, it's just it's, it's it's better, you know. It's, 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 it's perfect for a cruise around the bay. They say, come sail with me, come on, let's sail away. Come on, Eamon. I think we're done here. I think right. we're done here. Right. Can I stop now? If you like, man. Oh, no, no, wait, no, wait. Your jigsaw, you, you, no, you've no, got to get the... No, hang on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it appears that the bits well, of my life are to remain incomplete. Life. I've always wanted to have a go on this second thing. I've always wanted to have a go Which is probably for the best. Hello, everyone. I'm some feckin' stupid Hello, guest who's going to come out and tell you some vacuous anecdotes. Kill the music. Bits of your Now, see, normally at the end, Peter, what we do is we give you a little portrait-sized version of this. But I checked backstage, and surprise, surprise, it's not back in there. <laughs> so this time, we're going to give you this. Here, all you have to do is this. Here, all you have to do is... Well, that's fucking symbolic, isn't it? Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I imagine this will be the last ever episode of Bits of Your Life. I think I speak for everyone when I say that we wish Eamon the very best for his retirement and his recovery, whichever order they should come in. Whichever order they should come in. That's really kind of you. That's really kind of Play the music, boys. Play the music. Verses of his song. When you look around, you and your miles and miles off track. I got just the job. Sometimes it's impossible to get the smoothest back, but that's just the job. It's difficult to contemplate, but contemplate you must. When church and state have failed you And you're trying to adjust If you can't trust the telly Then there's nothing left to trust Guess that's just a job Come on Do you ever feel like you're running in circles? Do you feel like every month costs more? You're not alone. Over the last year, more and more... All right, all right, slow and steady wins the race. He's such a sweetie.